Jets were able to score 48 points without Tim Tebow. It was all Mark Sanchez, folks, as they beat the Bills 48-28. The Vikings in an overtime thriller in Adrian Peterson's return beat the Jaguars 26-23. Andrew Luck's debut did not go as good as well as RG3's as his team lost to the Bears 41-21. The Cardinals beat the Seahawks 2016. That was a game that I was watching live in the last minute and the NFL replacement refs, as you all know, the NFL official referees are having a, well, you could call it a strike, but it's more of a holdout, kind of kind of like what Maurice Jones-Drew was doing. Obviously, he's back now, but the NFL referees are in a holdout and these replacement officials have, have come in. There's been some questionable calls this first week. Nothing too bad that cost a team a game, but it could have cost the Cardinals the game as the NFL ref, replacement referees accidentally gave the Seattle Seahawks four timeouts in the second half of Sunday's game while they were on third and goal in the fourth quarter. So that was almost a huge mistake and that certainly would have been blown out of proportion in the media and there would be a lot of controversy around uh, what would be happening with the referees and maybe the NFL would give the referees what they want more money if that would have happened but uh, thank goodness for the Cardinals it did not Buccaneers beat the Panthers 16-10 people were telling me that the Packers were supposed to go undefeated this year they find themselves at 0-1 after losing to Alex Smith and the 49ers 30-22 the Broncos and Peyton Manning's debut let me tell you something Peyton Manning did not look like he was away from the game for a, a full year he played spectacular. That no huddle offense from Denver, Pittsburgh just could not stop on the way to Denver's first victory of the season, beating the Steelers 31 19 at home. So, technically, for the Steelers, they played the Broncos back to back games. And with Tebow, they didn't win. And now with Manning, they didn't win against Denver. So, tough times for Pittsburgh. Obviously, Pittsburgh bang banged up. They had their safety, Clark, who could not play because of a sickle cell trait uh, in the high altitude. He played in a game there, I believe, in 2005, and uh, he had to get his like spleen and kidney removed and had a lot of problems there. Definitely, it was life-threatening for him, so definitely not worth it to suit up and play just for one game. Also, James Harrison, who got banged up in the preseason, Although he's on his way back, he did not play that game as well. So obviously, if those two would have played, it would have made, in my opinion, a lot bigger of an impact and could have changed the outcome of the ball game. But nonetheless, the Broncos are 1-0. The Steelers are 0-1. The Broncos won that game 31-19. to The two Monday night games, as they always have the doubleheader Monday night football, Ravens blew out the Bengals 44-13. You know, Joe Flacco said in the offseason, I'm the best quarterback in the NFL, and he he sure as heck showed that you know he's up there. Put up 44 points on a on a not a bad Bengals defense. So obviously the Bengals a a playoff team from a year ago. Return Green at wideout, Dalton at quarterback for his sophomore season, and did pick up Ben Jarvis Green Ellis, the law firm from the New England Patriots in the off season. So you know I I wouldn't be surprised to see Cincinnati be poised for another playoff run. And ugh, the, that was just an ugly game. The Chargers and Raiders, the Chargers won 22-14 up in Oakland. The poor long snapper for the Raiders, you know, was injured on a play, you know, on, on a punt return. So he had to leave the game. He's a pro bowler. In comes the backup. Two snaps were delivered on a bounce to Shane Leckler. Both times he was fumbled. One time he was, one time the ball was fumbled, the other time he had to pick up the ball and just wait to get tackled right there. Both times fourth and out, turnover on downs for the Raiders, and the other time there was some miscommunication on the line, snapped the ball to Leckler, and the punt was blocked. So three miscued punts for the Oakland Raiders on 
Monday night as they fall to the Chargers 22-14. Definitely a uh, an ugly game up in Oakland to say the least, but definitely not a, a situation that you want to be a part of if <laughs> if you're the uh, the long snapper up in Oakland. So that's certainly something to watch out for in week two if he returns or not. We're not sure on his status. Games this week, there's one tomorrow night. They have Thursday night football year around now on the NFL Network. Chicago and Green Bay, big rivalry, one of the best rivalry in sports. Jay Cutler leads his troops into Green Bay to face the 0-1 Green Bay Packers. Rest of the games are on Sunday and Monday. KC at Buffalo, New Orleans at Carolina, Cleveland at Cincinnati, Minnesota at Indianapolis, Houston at Jacksonville, Oakland at Miami, Arizona at New England, Tampa Bay at the Giants of New York, Baltimore at Philadelphia, Dallas at Seattle, Washington at St. Louis, New York Jets at Pittsburgh, Tennessee at San Diego, Detroit at San Francisco, and the Monday night game that I'm looking forward to watching, Peyton Manning leads his 1-0 Broncos into the Georgia Dome to play Matt Ryan and the Atlanta Falcons and their extremely strong receiving core led by Roddy White and Julio Jones in Atlanta. Michael Turner has some wheels out of the backfield. And, of course, like I said, Matt Ryan, one of the best quarterbacks in the game. So that's going to be a matchup worth watching. And that, that if I had to give you a game of the week, that would be you know, the game of the week that you should watch. It's going to be a great Monday night game. So kudos to whoever scheduled that game as the Monday nighter. Right after this quick, I promise, last commercial break, it was a minute long because, you know, I felt like it. But I'll, I'll give you guys a 31-second commercial break here. We'll come on back and we'll discuss college football. We'll discuss the rankings and we will discuss the ranked teams and who they're playing this week and what teams I'm putting on upset alert. Chris's Corner on Spreaker.com. <laughs> Hey, welcome back into Chris's Corner on Spreaker.com. I told you it was going to be a quick commercial break. I don't lie when it comes to Spreaker.com and all the fantastic shows and people on Spreaker.com. You know, listen to the other shows. Really, I really like joining uh, Stephen Hughes on Stephen's Hoop Show and Stephen's All Out Baseball Show. I think you can catch that one tomorrow, Stephen's All Out Baseball Show tomorrow. Sam Situation on Sunday. Uh, Robert Dieters, uh, who... Pretty much is the runner, is the, is the head of national sports. He's doing some volleyball broadcast tomorrow and a football broadcast on Friday. You can also listen to a replay of his volleyball ca- broadcast from yesterday. Obviously, volleyball, a very tough sport to announce, but I feel he did a good job in his uh, first time. So give it up for uh, Rob Dieters, the head of national sports. Jason Garoline show, that's where it's at too. Um, Cameron. Scott Cameron show, very good too. So make sure to listen to everything that's going down here on National Sports. Can't forget Nick Aguilar. He's got his uh, West Coast bias and West Coast fantasy, and he's got a bunch of shows. So listen to National Sports. Give us a follow. Give us some listens, and uh, you know, follow us on Twitter at National Sports. It's all uh, it's all in uppercase. Like I said, we were going to get to college football and there wasn't much of a shakeup in the top 10 but you know definitely some, some surprising teams were able to crack the top 25 let's go down the AP top 25 list real fast Alabama is the number one team in the nation followed by USC and LSU Alabama a win over Western Kentucky USC you know playing Syracuse at MetLife in New York. I don't want to call it escaping with the win, but they did win by 13. Packed house. Syracuse, a Big East team, not that great. Syracuse is 0-2 now. But Syracuse did play them tough, and I don't know if that was weak play on USC's end or just a strong performance by the Orange of Syracuse. But USC stays at number two for now. A lot of people thought 
that LSU would hop over them, and they did in the USA Today poll, but uh, most people go by the AP Top 25, and that's what I'm going by as well. LSU still at number three after a dominant, dominant 41-3 victory over the Washington Huskies at home. Oregon, pretty convincing win against Fresno State. Oklahoma scored 69 points against Florida A&M after almost being upset by the UTEP Miners. Florida State also coming in at number five. We have a tie right there. Receiving the same amount of votes are Florida State and Oklahoma. Florida State beat Savannah State 55 nothing. If you remember Savannah State, they lost 84 nothing to Oklahoma State week one. Turn around and play the number five team in the nation. And don't lose by as much, but eh, they only played into the third quarter. Weather limited the game, and I'm sure Savannah State was happy to get out of there and return to their FCS play. Georgia comes in at number seven after a big statement win at Missouri. South Carolina beat up on East Carolina. West Virginia did not play last week. Geno Smith, still a Heisman candidate. Still a Heisman candidate. Michigan State with the win. Clemson won. Ohio State beat a good UCF team out of Conference USA. Virginia Tech won. Texas won. Kansas State blew out Miami, who looked really good. Miami looked really good in their first game against Boston College at Boston College, getting a win there. But, man, Kansas State, with a statement game, moved seven rankings up to 15 in the nation. TCU did not play last week. They are still 16 in the nation. They are wet 1-0, getting ready for their first season in the Big 12. Michigan... 1-1 one one at 17, that lost, of course, to number 1 Alabama the first week. And, you know, just snuck by Air Force this week. So, I don't know what's going on with Denard Robinson and Michigan, but they're going to need to pick it up if they want to make it back to another BCS Bowl game. Florida beat Texas A&M at Texas A&M in Texas A&M's SEC debut. Louisville moved to 2-0, and up to 19. Notre Dame escaped at home with a win against Purdue. Of course, as we said earlier, Notre Dame in all sports except football, as we're talking about football right now, is moving to the ACC. Notre Dame, an independent team in football and will stay independent, but will play five ACC teams a year. 21, Stanford looked good against Duke after almost getting upset by San Jose State week one. And I was shocked when I saw the number 22 rank. How about the UCLA Bruins? UCLA. UCLA ranked. The team that lost 50 to nothing to USC to close out last year's regular season in Pac-12 play. This same team, led by Jonathan Franklin, Heisman candidate now, in the backfield, and freshman quarterback Brett Hundley, Upset Nebraska at the Rose Bowl Saturday, 36-31. They're 2-0 and on the season, and they're the 22nd ranked team in the country. A team that returns to being ranked for the first time since 2005, I believe. Tennessee, another one of those teams who hasn't been ranked in a while. They're at number 23. University of Arizona, 2-0 and after an abysmal season last year. Hey, they got rid of Mike Stoops, and look what happened. They're 2-0. and Pac-12 just did very well this weekend. And how about BYU closing out the top 25? So certainly a very interesting, you know, set from 22 to 25. All these teams were not ranked last week, and all these teams were not ranked at all last year. So that's certainly something to watch out for to see if these teams can keep it up. Arkansas is not ranked anymore after being upset by Louisiana Monroe. Wisconsin is not ranked anymore after being upset by Oregon State. Monty Ball just has not been able to get it going this year. Like I said earlier, Nebraska got upset by UCLA. And Oklahoma State was taken down by Arizona. So, you know, you count, you go down the list here. One, two, three, four, five. Pac-12 teams in the top 25. Oregon State very well could be on its way. As well as Arizona State. Both teams are receiving votes for the top 25 polls. 
as uh, you know, Utah was last week, but they 